Well, my name is Kent Hovind. I taught high school science for 15 years, and now for the last 16 years I've been an evangelist. I speak about 900 times a year now on the subject of creation, evolution, and dinosaurs. And I take the position that the Bible is literally true and scientifically accurate, and the evolution theory being taught in our schools in violation of the First Amendment is the dumbest and most dangerous religion in the history of planet Earth. No dumber idea ever. Anyway. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am Jen and this is Fundy Fridays and here on my channel I talk about different aspects of Christian fundamentalism, American conservative politics, pop culture, deconstruction. It's pretty much the best channel on the internet. Today we are going to be talking about a very interesting person. Uh, that's probably the nicest thing I can say about him and that would be Kent Hovind. Kent Hovind has a lot of nicknames including Dr. Dino, the Baptist Tiger King, and one that I would like to submit to the lexicon which would be Dollar Store Ken Ham uh, and we will be getting into that later as we see just how pathetic Kent is because he can't even be a creationist right. Kent wears many hats as well. He's a sovereign citizen, a young earth creationist, a domestic abuser, and a fake scientist. The story of Kent Hovind is one of hidden information, clandestine activities, and very intentional obfuscation. More so than any of my previous subjects, Kent seeks to avoid accountability and goes far out of his way to keep the details of his life as confusing as he possibly can. Hope you guys are ready, excited, you got your pins, your pads, your, your protractors, and your dino t-shirt. Because it's going to be fun. But one more thing before we begin. I would really like to give a special thanks to Sadie from the Leaving Eden podcast. Um, not only should you check out her podcast because it's awesome. She helped me hunt down um, a couple of things I needed for research. And and so God bless you. You really helped me with this episode. And I would also like to thank the Preacher Boys podcast because I took a very long clip from the show uh, interviewing Cindy Hovind. And we will be getting into that in a little bit. And one more big dino-sized thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Casetify. Hey everybody, James here. You can go to casetify.com slash fundyfridays right now and save 15% off of your next order of the best phone case you'll ever have. Now, a lot of you may know Casetify is a longtime friend of Fundy Fridays, but not only that, they are the world's number one seller of protective phone cases and quality mobile accessories. And when I say protective cases, I do mean protective. Casetify only sells cases that can survive their rigorous 104 drop test gauntlet, which is four times what even the military requires for their phone cases. They're able to protect your phone's looks and functionality from drops of up to 8.2 feet while maintaining a sleek, comfortable form factor that's perfect for any size hand. Let me go ahead and put my phone through the ringer to show you how great these cases are. All right, so we're going to do this all in real time. These pretty butterflies right here, they're going to show you what's up. I'm going to show you right now. That's Jen's face right there. You can see her. That's phone's in working order now. I'm going to put it right here on my forehead. Three, two, one, drop. Then I'm going to pick it up. Look at that. Look at that. Still working. No cracks. No damage. Not even on the case. That's how tough they are. And even with all this protection, Casetify still manages to offer thousands of patterns, prints, and other customization options to make sure you get the exact phone case of your dreams. Jen and I currently have over 20 cases between us, and it got to the point where she had to get this little box you can see here just so I had somewhere to put them all. Casetify has worked hard to build a diverse roster of over 300 partner artists from all different backgrounds and walks of life. I actually learned about their Jess Miller Draws collaboration for the first time, and I swear I have never had floral patterns speak to me like this before. And Casetify still offers their re program, allowing you to send in your old phone case in order to earn discounts on new ones as you upgrade. This allows Casetify to make their cases out of 65% recycled materials and to reduce their carbon emissions by 20% as compared to their competitors. Jen and I also managed to get our hands on some of the Casetify phone straps recently and Oh lordy. I don't know where these things have been my whole life, but they are a serious game changer when it comes to taking pictures with my phone and having it readily available for that. 
I'm not kidding. If you're going on any kind of trip or if you're going to a big event or a concert or something, just do yourself a favor and pick up one of these phone straps as soon as you can before you go. So once again, thank you so much to Casetify, where you can go to casetify.com slash fundyfridays right now to save 15% off your next order. Thank you to James for doing the ad because... God knows I don't want to. Kent E. Hovind, once again, can't find his middle name, so I guess I'm going to invent one. I'm going to say... Evasion! Yes, okay. Kent Evasion Hovind was born January 15th, 1953. I have a quote from him where he says he was raised in East Peoria, Illinois, and accepted Jesus Christ as his personal savior February 6th, 1969. And then he started attending Bethel Baptist Church in Pekin, or Pekin, forgive me please, Illinois. I've also seen him say that he was raised Methodist, as well as mm, raised Mennonite. While it may be possible that he was all of those things, I think that, you know, there's like two truths and a lie here. Like, w which one is it? I am, without apology, an independent fundamental Baptist. As a new Christian, I was raised up spiritually on the preaching of Jack Hiles, John R. Rice, Bob Gray, Lee Robertson, Bob Jones, and Tom Malone. I was raised at a Mennonite church as a child. I have spoken in Amish and Mennonite schools. I don't mean to speak evil of the Amish people, but they serve as a great example of what I fear is happening in our independent Baptist movement. Kent says his passion for teaching creationism started when he was in college and he was seeing different conflicting messages from what he was learning at school and what he was reading in the Bible. Keep in mind, he was going to a place called Midwestern Baptist College in the 70s, so I really don't know how much evolution he was actually being taught or if this is just a convenient story. Either way, he graduated in 1974 and... Uh, started teaching creationism in different private schools. After I show you some of the weird shit that he was um, talking about in his children's seminars, um, you might be a little concerned about the kind of education that he was giving these kids. He got married to his first wife, Joe, in 1973 and had three kids, Eric, Kent Jr., and Marlissa. And no shade to anybody named Marlissa, but I have never heard that name in my entire life. And it always just like, do you mean, do you mean Melissa? Do you mean Marissa? What are you saying? Maybe it's like the Renesmee of, of his life. I live in Pensacola, Florida. I have three kids, one of each. Got them all married and the dog died. Praise God, I made it. I'm home free. And so far, four grandkids. And that's definitely God's reward for not killing your own kids when you thought about it. So <clears throat> hang in there, it'll be worth it all. All my family lives right around me and they all work in our ministry. Well, Kent did claim to love his wife. He did throw her under the bus when he was arrested in 2006 and divorced her right afterwards. Um, and he has since been married three more times. And they say romance is dead. In 1998 and 1991, Hovind received a um, master's degree and doctorate in Christian education through the mail to a place called Patriot University in Colorado Springs. And this place is a shack in the middle of the desert, and it's literally listed as a diploma mill on Wikipedia. And you can pay a flat fee and just get a degree. And speaking of, I'm going to read you a little bit of Kent's doctorate dissertation, which is a little more than a glorified eighth grade persuasive essay prompt. And you're going to love this. Uh, this dissertation was actually leaked by WikiLeaks. Hovind's dissertation is approved by only one person, Dr. Wayne Knight, who later fled from Colorado to Texas after pleading guilty to crimes related to child molestation at a related business slash religious school. This essay or... I mean, I'm not going to call it a fucking dissertation. That's not what it is. It doesn't have any sort of format. It's super short and it's basically a fluffed up biography. Um, it's like triple spaced. Um, half of it is just Bible verses. And like, <laughs> there's a poem in there. He wrote a poem. Okay. It's too funny. He's got a random tangent in here. He goes, Hitler was an evolutionist, and it was the crazy doctrine of evolution that, in, that is fundamentally responsible for World War II. In Japan, the same thing was going on with the Shinto religion. This teaches that the Japanese people evolved from gods, and it was their destiny to rule the world. Japan and Germany got together, and we had an awful time in World War II. <laughs> Did we? Is that what happened? 
Yes, the controversy and debate of evolution and creation has a tremendous influence in our society. On the trip to the moon, they were so concerned that there might be some type of bacteria life on the moon, they spent extra money to isolate the moon rocks when they got them in the spacecraft and when they got them back on Earth. They will do the same thing with all other planets. They will say, oh, there might be life there. We need to protect these rocks. One of these astronauts offered to eat some of the moon dust on the way back to prove that there was no life in it and that it was perfectly sterile. Bring back a Mars rock or a Jupiter rock. I'll eat it or lick it. As I was thinking on this subject, I wrote a poem to try to explain this. Comparing blind men and atheists. Two blind men argued well into the night about the great question, is there really sight? Said one to the other, and quite fervently, there cannot be colors or else we could see. So take red and green and blue off the list. If I cannot see them, they must know exist. A crazy man told me the sky is bright blue. I listened intently, but I caught no clue. Of anything out there to alter my mind, I'm not deaf, you know. I hear perfectly fine. That is not how you spell here. Be quiet and listen, and then you will know that colors aren't real. How dare they say so? They tell me that grass is some sort of green. It looks like the rest of the world that I've seen. It tastes a lot different than jelly or cheese. If I smell it too long, it sure makes me sneeze. It feels a lot different than ice cream or snow, but to say that it's green, I'd have to say no. I will not believe it until I have seen. There isn't a difference twixt red, blue, or green. And so the men argued with all of their might, and I couldn't show them that they were not right. They cannot see colors because they are blind, but I cannot get the truth in their mind. Until they are given the great gift of sight, never, not ever, will they see the light. Two atheists argued on University Sod about the great question, Is there a God? Said one to the other, and quite fervently, There can't be a God, or else we could see. So take that old Bible and God off the list. If I cannot see him, he must know exist. Be quiet and listen. It's... It says, be quiet, and then you will know that God is not real. How dare they say so? A crazy man told me God lives up in heaven. I used to believe that when I was just seven. But now that I'm older and wiser, you see, I will not believe it. You can't prove it to me. I cannot sense God with sight, taste, or smell. I do not believe in heaven or hell. I've never heard God or felt him at all. If he's really up there, I wish he would call. I said, listen, fellows, you're spiritually blind. You've only five entrances into your mind. You can't fathom God or eternity. There are lots of things that really are real. It doesn't disprove God because you can't feel. So you two can argue the rest of the night. There's no way to show you that you are not right. When you get to heaven or hell, if you please, you'll understand God as you fall on your knees. I wish you could see him or hear him somehow, but that isn't possible where you are now. To deny his evidence is really absurd. You'll have to believe him and trust in his word. Well, that's a really nice poem, Ken. I'll make sure to put it on the refrigerator. Oh, and by the way, um, young earth creationists call regular people old earthers. Kent established his infamous ministry, Creation Science Evangelism, in 1989 to evangelize and teach creationism. I feel like I just said all of those same words in a different order. In May 1999, his son Eric joined Creation Science Evangelism as a speaker and his daughter Marlissa began training to become Hoven's secretary. That year, CSE merged with Faith Baptist Fellowship of Hawthorne, Florida, beginning a relationship that lasted until 2002. Do you want to know more about how to combat the godless theory of evolution? Creation Science Evangelism offers four great tools that help strengthen the faith of believers and win the lost to Christ. After 15 years of teaching high school science, Dr. Hoven began Creation Science Evangelism in 1989. We are a ministry that is dedicated to providing tools which will help you combat the evolution philosophy that is destroying the faith of millions every year. The first tool Creation Science offers is their powerful, life-changing video series. Over the last 12 years, well over a million videotapes of Dr. Hoven's seminar have circled the globe. They are reaping a harvest of souls for the kingdom of Christ as well as helping restore the faith of many thousands confused by the evolution propaganda to which they've been subjected. These videos are available in English, Russian, French, Spanish, Japanese, and sign language. The Age of the Earth, first of the seven-part series, teaches that God created the universe about 6,000 years ago in six literal days. Could this be true? Can it be scientifically proven that the Earth is not billions of years old? This tape gives solid scientific evidence that the Earth is young, and that the Bible is scientifically accurate. How did the environment of the original creation differ from ours today? And how would this allow men to live over 900 years? Can Christians have a good explanation for the existence of dinosaurs? Could some dinosaurs still be alive today? 
These and many more questions are covered in the second and third part of the series. Remember this next part, it's going to come up again. In 2003, with the aid of Glenn Stoll, a promoter of tax avoidance schemes, Hoven set up a series of entities starting with an unincorporated association of pure trust on May 13th, under which a corporation's sole and several ministerial trusts were established starting on May 23rd. CSE properties were conveyed to the trust, which operated under business licenses from the, quote, kingdom of heaven. Hovind is associated with the Unregistered Baptist Fellowship, a loosely affiliated group of roughly 100 churches which share a theology of Christian resistance to civil governments. Because the UBF would, would consider it an acknowledgement of government authority over the church, they reject the highly favorable 501c3 status, which makes donations tax deductible and exempts them from income tax. The UBF holds that governmental authority stops at the threshold of the church, and Hovind has likened his ministry status to that of the Vatican City State. When the federal government obtained a search warrant in 2004, the IRS criminal investigator made the sworn statement that the organization did not have a business license and did not have tax-exempt status. This is going to come up later because Kent believes he is a sovereign citizen, which is a person that does not believe that they are a citizen of the country that they're in and that they are like the president of their own country and they don't have to follow any laws and they don't pay taxes and they always argue with cops like i don't i don't need to have my license i don't need to have my plates i'm a sovereign citizen and then they get shot this is gonna come up later because kent got arrested with another weird sovereign guy who kept pushing the boundaries and he got a lot of jail time and that guy is a part of this um religious movement called the embassy of heaven which um gives out special like license plates that that aren't legitimate they're a whole sovereign religious movement too and they they don't follow any laws and just in the early 2000s kent opened a theme park it it was just some playground equipment and like a store and a three foot pond but he calls it a theme park in his backyard called dinosaur Adventureland, and he will say that it's in pensacola it's about an hour from pensacola it's in alabama so take that <laughs> see i like dinosaurs and we have lots of dinosaur stuff we even have dinosaur adventure land at our place if you want to come over bring your class over and bring a group of kids and see our dinosaur adventure land we have lots of cool stuff for dinosaurs. We have swings and slides and rides. I like dinosaurs so much, even my staple puller in my office is a dinosaur head to pull staples out of paper. The lamp I have on my desk to light things up when I'm working is a dinosaur. I have dinosaurs on my time. My website is drdino.com. We have lots of dinosaur stuff at our place, and I like dinosaurs. <clears throat> We can come to see Dinosaur Adventure Land where you learn about how God made the dinosaurs. We have videotapes you can watch, and we have adventure stuff, swings and slides and rides. How many of you have been to Dinosaur Adventure Land to swing on my swings before? You will have a wonderful time. We have a climbing wall and a sandbox and a two-story circular slide. You go down, come out real dizzy and try to figure out where you are when you get out. You can try to break a record. And if you break a record, you get a $5 gift certificate to use in our bookstore to buy some stuff about dinosaurs, if you'd like. Dinosaur Adventure Land is billed as the place where dinosaurs and the Bible meet. And I don't know about you, but it looks kind of like a dump compared to Ken Ham's Creation Museum. And I'm no fan of Ken Ham. His park is a million times better than Kent's stupid little backyard death trap. Kent made this place um, as a tax shelter shit. I mean, he made it as a educational tool for children to learn about creationism because supposedly public school was teaching them evolution which if you think about it for more than 10 seconds it completely falls apart because the children that are going to dinosaur adventure land are definitely not going to public school and also i never learned about evolution and i went to public school in the bible belt i didn't learn about creationism either but we just didn't address it we just didn't talk about it. We were too busy learning about how the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. There's a couple of different addresses listed for Dinosaur Adventure Land um, because Kent kept moving licenses and deeds and different things around to try and keep the government from seizing Dinosaur Adventure Land. Um, he also made his own road illegally leading leading to dinosaur adventure land and he did not pay the fifty dollar fee to establish a park so he just can't do anything right from what i've heard from 
people who have had to sit through these videos, they are quite awful. I'll show you the dinosaur one in a second. I just really wanted to talk about this very strange video, which is about teaching kids magic tricks. Y you're right to be confused as I was of what the fuck that has to do with anything. Um, and it gets weirder. Like, yeah, there's some coin tricks and like some card tricks, but he starts talking about rope tricks. Just electrician tape, and then burn the end so it doesn't come unraveled with the nylon rope. That's what the black stuff is on the end. If you put the rope around your neck like this, and pull real hard, you will kill yourself. What the fuck are you doing choking yourself in front of these children? You can't go to Dinosaur Adventure Land, or at least I wouldn't advise you to, because it's always in weird legal entanglements, and I'm pretty sure they all have guns, so I wouldn't be trespassing or trying to go to Dinosaur Adventure Land. Why do kids like this guy again? Now, when we're telling this story today about dinosaurs, every time you see the smiley face, or if you're watching this tape, if you see a smiley face come up that says, beep, that's your signal to stand up, turn around, and sit down as fast as you can. Let's practice. Ready? Beep. Stand up, turn around, and sit down. Uh, pretty good, pretty good. Some of you are just a little slow. We'll give you a chance again. Okay. I like science, but <clears throat> science has a long history of teaching things that are wrong. What is with, these, with the beeps? What, what are you doing? They're teaching the kids the Earth is billions of years old, and that is wrong. And they're teaching them that dinosaurs lived millions of years ago, and that is wrong. Most of the books in school say dinosaurs lived millions of years ago. Like this book says, no human being has ever seen a live dinosaur. Does he know that or does he think that? Me. He thinks that. He doesn't know that, does he? He can't say nobody's ever seen a dinosaur. He didn't talk to everybody that ever lived, did he? Now, kids, I like the brachiosaur. Oh, beep, stand up, turn around, sit down. There you go. Stop with the classical conditioning. What are these, what is this beep stuff? Okay, this is my blondosaurus. You just have to talk to her kind of slow, okay? See, dinosaurs always lived with people. And then Noah took dinosaurs on the ark. You say, dinosaurs on the ark, they're kind of big, aren't they? Well, the big ones were big, but the little ones were little. And Noah was 600 years old when he built that boat. He was probably smart enough to figure out, you don't have to bring the biggest ones you can find. Bring two babies. Just be sure to get a pink one and a blue one. That'll be important later. What happened, as the people began to multiply after the flood was over, there was only eight people that survived, they started having kids and grandkids and great-grandkids, and pretty soon, there got to be more people, and they started killing off the dragons. So that's what happened. When people began to move into the area, they started killing off the dragons. So throughout most of history, they called them dragons. Beep, stand up, turn around, sit down. Oh, that was so slow. Let's try it again. Ready? Beep, stand up, turn around, sit down. I don't know, some of you are, you're so slow someday, you may get run over by a herd of stampeding turtles. Oh, I can't take it anymore with the beeps. And, and, and by the way, it is never explained. At least I didn't see it, it explained. Um, and I watched the whole thing at least once. In all seriousness, Kent's Backyard Dino Park is, like anything designed by a sovereign citizen, completely unregulated and dangerous. So much so that a seven-year-old boy drowned in a three-foot pond at Dinosaur Adventureland, a tragedy that Kent treats with a sickening lack of respect. We had, this last Sunday, rumors going around the internet about an accidental drowning here at Dinosaur Adventureland, and it's true. There was a family with five kids, uh, twin seven-year-olds, all playing in the lake together. The water was three feet deep. Suddenly the dad noticed that uh, Stephen, the seven-year-old, was gone and he apparently slipped on the dock and hit his head. Nobody saw it. We don't know, but he did drown in our lake. And uh, we tried to, your uh, wife is a medical doctor and she's right there on the scene within, as soon as he got him out of the water, we don't know how long he was underwater, but she gave him CPR, probably did everything right, took him to the hospital. Yeah, I mean, it just, it, 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 too late. We don't know what happened. Anyway, the kids had a blast here, and the dad wants to bring all the kids back and loves the place, but... The fuck is wrong with you, Kent? How dare you say that shit and with a straight face? According to the Monroe Journal, the child apparently fell unnoticed from a dock adjacent to a small pond on the property and drowned in three feet of water. The same article reports that although life jackets were available near the accident site, the victim was not wearing a personal flotation device when his body was discovered. The journal also noted that no lifeguards were on duty at the time of the accident. Sounds really safe, Kent. Kent is a young earth creationist, which means he believes the earth is 6,000 years old and that human beings and dinosaurs coexisted alongside one, one another. And with having 
controversial beliefs like that comes quite a few haters. And yes, he has had beef with legitimate scientists, which obviously. Kent also has beef with another IFB leader, Stephen Anderson. Um, we've talked about him before. He's this angry little man. He's anti-Semitic. He's homophobic. He um, is very angry. He's banned from several countries. Um, he's just an all-around terrible person. Um, but he hates Kent Hovind now because he got divorced and also because Kent endorsed this book called The Shack, which is apparently about, um, I actually don't know what it's about, but it portrays God as a black woman and that really pissed off Steven Anderson and knowing only that small amount of context makes this clip really funny. Then on the next page, the main character of the book, Mac, says, Am I supposed to believe that God is a big black woman with a questionable sense of humor? Jesus laughed. She's a riot. You can always count on her to throw you a curve or two. They prefer this fat black mama instead of the God of the Bible. They prefer that God. He's an evil little man. Um, but anyway, he does not like Kent anymore. Um, and I f was looking for more information about this. And I found this clip where... Kent is like talking about how he's kind of sad that Steven doesn't like him anymore. And he said that he was one of the only people that supported him while he was in jail. So it really doesn't take much to get on this guy's bad list, I guess. Probably Kent's most famous adversary besides the U.S. government would be Ken Ham, a another young Earth creationist from Australia. He opened the Creation Museum and the Ark Encounter. I have a video about going to both of those things. He runs Answers in Genesis, uh, which makes a magazine. And apparently they published an article in 2002 called Arguments We Think Creationists Should Not Use. One such argument was that footprints found in Texas proved that a man and dinosaurs coexisted. Mr. Hoven said he considered the argument now abandoned by many creationists valid mr hoven said he gave 700 lectures a year and that 38,000 people had visited his park wow i really don't give a shit about both of their stupid creation arguments and realistically i think that kent and ken could feasibly coexist because i don't think that most people are actually paying attention to anything that either of them are saying they just park their kids in front of the video and go i don't know do laundry or something or they're like me just walking around the museum I'm making fun of something and part of me thinks that Kent is just jealous because he doesn't even have the musical stylings of Buddy Davis to back up his dinosaur adventure land two children play tag on a street downtown one is light and the other dark brown but their eyes are blind to their color of skin I wish the world could see like them. So now for a really fun part, we're going to talk about Kent's legal trouble and subsequent jail sentencing. Before we get into the tax dodging stuff, um, I wanted to bring this up because it's only one sentence on the Wikipedia and I almost missed it. But on August 15, 2002, Hovind was arrested for assault, battery, and, and burglary in an incident with a creation science evangelism secretary. Remember that when he's claiming that he didn't domestically abuse his wife later on. My favorite fun fact about this situation is that Kent was really close with the Hortons of Pensacola Christian College fame and uh, allegedly it was Rebecca Horton of Abeka Books that ratted him out to the IRS. So I love fundy drama. It is the juiciest shit. So Kent was claiming to be a sovereign citizen. Um, he even like filed something that said that any signature that he and his wife had made since 1998 was not valid because they were not American citizens. And that fucked up a lot of different things. Um, but essentially he was not paying taxes and he was not um, properly filing any paperwork for his employees. He was making threats against the government and he, he was moving assets around that he wasn't supposed to be. A ruling by U.S. District Judge Casey Rogers states that the nine properties that make up Dinosaur Adventureland as well as two bank accounts associated with the park will be used to satisfy 430400 owed to the federal government. Kent Hovind, who founded the park and a ministry, Creation Science Evangelism, is serving 10 years in federal prison for failing to pay the Internal Revenue Service 
more than $470,000 in employee taxes. He was found guilty in November 2006 on 58 counts, including failure to pay employee taxes and making threats against investigators. The conviction culminated after 17 years of Hoven sparring with the IRS, saying he was employed by God and his ministers were not subject to payroll taxes. He claimed no income or property. So essentially, this man went to a real court of law, stood in front of a real judge, and argued that his almighty non-taxable God actually owns all of CSE's stuff and just lets Kit use it. And I'm not a lawyer and I don't quite understand a lot of this stuff and there is a lot of details. There's like some funny stuff, some disturbing stuff that went on during multiple trials of Ken Hovens. I highly suggest you read the Wikipedia page. Kent's wife, Joe, ended up serving a year in prison for evading bank reporting requirements. She was ordered by a tax court judge in December to pay nearly $1.6 million in taxes and penalties. Rumor is that she left Kent or he left her because she wanted to stay on the straight and narrow and pay her taxes and and be a good citizen and he decided to keep doing the same exact shit they got divorced i'm not even sure legally or not and i'm serious like it is very confusing the legality of his wedding licenses because there was like talk of some of them being common law marriages but that not actually going through and then like several of them are going by different names and like he will refer to them as his wives in videos but then like not legally claim them i don't know do you see how confused i sound imagine trying to do the research for this fucking video um he has wiped the internet of a lot of his stuff he files lawsuits and ceases and desists all the time false dmca claims i'm sure he's gonna come after me and I'm not afraid of him. This shit is very confusing, and I'm sorry if I don't explain it all the way. He was supposed to serve 10 years. He got out early due to good behavior, and you will never guess who picked him up from jail. I'll give you, I'll give you three seconds, okay? It was Jim Bob Duggar picked him up from fucking jail. So there's quite a few other legal things that we got to talk about. And this is by no means an exhaustive list. And I don't want to hear anybody complaining about my list not being very detailed. You can tell where my insecurities are this week. The government was trying to seize Dino Land because um, Kent owed all this money. And he was doing some legal bullshit. Once again, this strategy essentially involved filing new registration paperwork under different names, addresses, and titles in an attempt to constantly keep the government confused and scrambling while they gather evidence of tax crimes. It is mostly a stopgap strategy that only delays the inevitable with the side effect of pissing off investigators a whole lot more when they do catch you. They look to bring the hammer down as hard as they can. The government doesn't have to file every single detail and signature as an individual charge. You gotta make them mad for them to go as far as they did with Kent. For context, Kent got 10 years for evading around $430,000 in taxes, and Wesley Snipes only got three years for evading $23 million. And sure, Blade is the greatest American film ever made, but that can only take you so far. With this comparison, we can see just how badly the government wanted to throw the book at Kent, because he was being a little smart aleck the whole fucking time. So because of all this, on October 21st, 2014, Hoven was indicted by a federal grand jury in Pensacola, Florida, on two counts of mail fraud, one count of conspiracy, along with a man named Paul John Hansen, who is the Embassy of Heaven guy. Um, and he also pretends to be a lawyer and is really sketchy. Um, but anyways, uh, conspiracy to commit mail fraud and one count of criminal contempt. For interfering with the sale of Pensacola properties, Hoban was forced to forfeit as a result of the 2006 case. So this is because of shit that he did from the first time. Hovind and Hansen pleaded not guilty and were tried together. The indictment says that in 2011, Hansen filed liens on nine of Hovind's forfeited properties on North Palifax Street, Cummings Road, and Oleander Drive. In 2012, the government was granted an injunction ordering that neither Hovind nor any agent acting on his behalf file or attempt to file any liens, notices, financing titles, and claims of whatever nature to cloud the title of the properties. The following year, both Hovind and Hansen reportedly mailed additional documents disputing the ownership of the property. Both men were charged with mail fraud, attempted conspiracy to commit mail fraud, and criminal contempt. Mail fraud can be punishable by up to 20 years in prison and as much as $500,000 in fines when involving an organization. Hansen ended up uh, getting a lengthy sentence, presumably because he kept fucking with the judge and filing countersuits and just being a sovereign citizen. Kent actually got away with everything. It's very confusing, but due to several technicalities, they couldn't actually prove that he committed certain crimes, whatever. He got off scot-free. Don't you love 
the justice system. Kent's charges were dismissed without prejudice, which James says means that the state is allowed to bring these charges back up in the future if they discover new information in the case. Might not know what any of that stuff means, but I do know that he keeps getting away with financial crimes, and Uncle Sam does not like that. So in 2016, he had a non-legal marriage to his second wife, Mary Toko, T-O-C-C-O, that's how I'm going to pronounce it, and they were only married for nine months. Then he had another non-legal marriage to... um, a woman named Cynthia. She goes by Cindy um, in 2018. And currently he has a new wife. I've seen two different names used to refer to her, which is, come on, you're not making it easy for me, Kent. I've seen her referred to as both Debbie and Sandra. So I don't know what her real name is, but allegedly they got married in 2021. This third wife, Cindy, she actually filed a protection from abuse against Kent and claims that he body slammed her and abused her basically. And she said that this happened in October of 2020. Oh, I can't believe I forgot to um, say this, guys. So what ended up happening with the DV case um, and Kent Hovind was that he was found guilty, but he only had to serve 30 days. So justice is served, I guess. There is a tape floating around of Kent at least verbally abusing her, Um, And you hear some like physical movement going on. I can't say exactly what it was. I implore you if you hear about this tape to not listen to it. Um, It's really disturbing. And I just wanted to tell you that I listened to it so that you don't have to. I believe Cindy. She's been interviewed by several channels on YouTube and otherwise talking about what she went through. Um, And she's got some really interesting claims about Kent and Dino Land. Not only is Kent a bitch and a liar, but turns out he was running allegedly some sort of weird drug and sex compound down at Dinosaur Adventure Land. He was allowing his employees to do drugs and there was talks of sex tapes being made and um hardcore pornography being played on an endless loop i know this sounds fucking bonkers because it is but anyway this next clip i'm about to show you is from the preacher boys interview with cindy hovind um and i just want to say that she is braver than a fucking marine for doing this interview especially because i saw in another interview she said that um the religious community doesn't believe her and they were treating her really terribly and it was only atheist creators who would give her the time of day and like that's just a sad state of affairs um which we could see coming um It seems like a lot of these evangelicals don't actually like each other. But anyway, she is extremely brave coming forward with this information. Kent Hovind is a very scary person and he's very litigious and apparently violent. Yeah, you did the right thing. It's really fucking hard to um, speak your truth, especially in a very sexist um, community. Generally, um, we do not respect victims in this society. So, um yeah. Once again, thank you for sharing your story, Cindy. Kent's tech man, Steve, was bringing to his house and pulling them off the bandwagon. Yeah. Getting them high. So I, you know, I want to help these new converts. I want to help them with what they came there for to turn over a new leaf in life. Kent Hoven wanted to cover for, for this drug hmm. push. And I'm like, what? Later on, Turns out this same guy gets busted. And when he's in jail, Kent sends 13 Dinosaur Adventureland volunteers to his house to collect the evidence before the police can get it. He finds sadomasochistic pornography on endless loop on two ministry computers in Steve's home. And essentially cameras, sex props, This man is manufacturing porn on creation science evangelism equipment. Yeah. And again, Kent wants to hide it. Also in 2021, Kent sued the government for false imprisonment, among other things, from 
the 2006 arrest. So he's still bringing this shit back up and he's suing everybody and their dog, it seems like, for half a billion dollars. Um, and this is not any ordinary lawsuit. Kent says, said misconduct was motivated by adverse political animus and constitutional purposeful discrimination and religious persecution. It also affects the masses by show of blast improvement in a grossly disproportionate manner, vis-a-vis sending a message to all observing Americans, just as practiced in communist China, that nail that sticks up gets hammered down. I mean, that's weird, but it's not sad. This next thing I'm about to read you is sad. As a result of this violation, Hovind suffered injuries including, but not limited to, emotional distress, loss of reputation, loss of revenue, loss of relationships such as a divorce after 42 years of a blessed marriage, followed by a complete abandonment by by son Eric, daughter Marlissa, and all grandchildren, with close to no speaking engagements as compared to being booked up in advance for 18 months prior to conviction, as associated with speaking in 30 plus countries, in 50 plus churches, and before more than 50,000 people year before the set arrest in 2006 where all this false notoriety started and hoven's popularity vanished are you aware that you're dunking on yourself in your own lawsuit saying that you're unpopular your family doesn't love you (laughs) bro i think that sounds like a you problem i don't think the government has anything to do with it in june 2021 this case was finally dismissed by the court and this time it was dismissed with prejudice, meaning that Kent is not allowed to refile this case under any circumstances. Once again, Kent's lifelong mission to antagonize the U.S. government as much as possible only serves to make him look foolish when they bring out the big artillery for his piddly little complaints. I've mentioned this before, but Kent um, is obsessed with himself and he likes to attack small YouTubers, including a creator named Emma Thorne. Um, And it's just pathetic. Like, Kent, nobody cares about you you have no friends you're old and your dinosaur park sucks but anyway if you're gonna pick on somebody pick on me kent leave these fucking small channels alone you fucking weird sexist dino creep i guess he feels like he's run out of people to bully now that his entire family has abandoned him did the widow atheist make you feel flattened kent poor baby I'm going to lead you off with a few more random facts because I got a lot. Number one, Kent's daughter's wedding that he officiated was actually on America's Funniest Home Videos. And it's uh, really cringe. For as much as you, Paul, and you, Marlissa. Hello? Yes, Lord. No, I wasn't calling you, but okay. Um... The Lord says he would like you to know that uh, what he has joined together, let no man put asunder. Also, um, some of his science has been used for chick tracks. You know, the little like section at the bottom where they have their citations backing up their arguments. Well, they they quoted Kent Hovind, so congrats. Kent also refers to himself as a cryptozoologist. Hi, my name is Eric. And what you're about to see is a powerful seminar that combines the last 30 years of research done by Dr. Hoven. It's in a field called cryptozoology, which is the study of hidden animals. Which I just think is really funny because um, he's got about as much credentials as James and I, uh, because we got a picture with Bigfoot. So I don't know what else you're trying to fucking prove here, Kent, but I think we did a little more work than you. Kent claims that the cyanide releasing compound Latrial, L A E T R I L E, is a cancer cure which the U.S. government is conspiring to suppress, and that diseases including HIV, Gulf War Syndrome, Crohn's colitis, and rheumatoid arthritis, and Alzheimer's were engineered by the money masters and governments of the world for the purpose of global economic domination. He has denounced democracy as evil and contrary to God's law and called global warming a communist conspiracy. He also believes in microchips and that barcodes um, contain the mark of the beast. So got a few write-ups in the Southern Poverty Law Center talking about his anti-Semitism and his homophobia. He says that evolution is the most stupid religion ever. He says that all the time. It was even part of his uh, dissertation. He had like a whole section talking about how it's a religion. It's not. It's not a religion. 
Dumbass. He was suspended for a week on YouTube for making an anti-vax video. Kent is one of the more dubious, if not downright pathetic people I've ever covered on this channel. He is a failure as a science instructor, business owner, and he can't even sue the government correctly. He only seeks to glorify himself and he spends all his precious free time obsessing over his haters when he should be paying his taxes or, I don't know, making his park safe for guests. He is a crotchety, mean, ignorant old boomer who needs to be dropped off at the nearest adult daycare center so he doesn't spend all day spreading conspiracy theories on Facebook and or running what seems to be a sex commune. Furthermore, Kent is the kind of lazy, egomaniacal know-it-all that thinks he can outwit experts at their own jobs despite demonstrating a lack of understanding in regards to even the most basic facts of life. Ken wholeheartedly believes that he knows more about the government than any lawyer or judge and more about the evolution of dinosaurs than literally every scientist before him. It's a kind of self-importance that leads him to pick and choose which laws he wants to follow through on frivolous lawsuits without a shred of self-awareness, and to waste the time and money of everyone in the legal system. If you've ever had to wait months or years to get your day in court, you might have people like Kent to thank for grinding our entire system to a halt. Did I just blame the failure of the entire American judicial system on Kent Hoven? You're goddamn right I did, and I'll do it again. His educational credentials are a complete fraud, all of his marriage have failed, and he is a laughing stock in the creationism world. Which is really saying something because all of those people are idiots. And I don't give two shits about trying to prove Kent wrong about evolution. And I think it's a waste of time for atheists who take the bait and try to have debates with this man. Kent is a manipulator, a huckster, and an asshole, and quite frankly, I'm starting to worry about his little anti-government crusade he's going on. I'm not implying there's going to be a standoff or anything, but I would say to make sure you keep a couple eyes on Dinosaur Adventure Land. Remember, this dude is the ultimate floor. Florida man. What about the fact that a child died under his lack of supervision at his government seized backyard dino camp? And if none of that does it for you, I would implore you to consider the dark implications of Kent's blended socio-religious worldview. This is a man who is willing to implore the highest court of the land that he, as a self-identified Christian, is exempt from any taxes or laws that inconvenience him in any way. He has done this over and over now and shows no signs of slowing down at this point. This is why you have to keep an eye on the fringe every now and then. Kent may seem stupid, ineffectual, and pathetically self-absorbed, and in my opinion, he is all of that and more. But recent political shifts in this country have gotten the far-right fringe much closer to power than they ought to be. The point is you need to be aware of both fundamentalists and sovereign citizens, but be especially aware when they are mixed together. In conclusion, I hate this man, and I can't wait to be called an overweight, sexually broken loser on his dumbass whack an atheist Wednesday, because that'll probably be the most views that he's ever gotten. You're welcome, Kent. I don't know about you guys, but I sure had fun making this episode. I uh, hope you had fun watching it. Once again, thank you to the Leaving Eden podcast, Preacher Boys podcast, and Case Defy. I have all kinds of information in the info box below, and if I forgot something, go ahead and tell me in the comments. It's great for engagement. Um, I really did try my best, although a lot of this is confusing legal tax law. If you like my channel, you want to support me financially, you can follow me on Patreon. It's only $3 a month and you get access to the Discord server, um, some behind the scenes, fun little videos. We do monthly streams and every now and then I'll throw you guys a poll. Um, but uh, yeah, I rely on the Patreon to live. So it's really important to me and um, I love you guys. Thank you so much for supporting me on there. If you want to follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Um, I don't go on Twitter much, especially now that uh, Elon is in charge. But every now and then, uh, James and I were recently on Jordan and McKay's Halloween stream, and that was super fun. It's long, but like we do a lot of fun stuff. I carved a pumpkin. Um, they made a little like gingerbread cemetery. We talked about uh, all kinds of random stuff. We played Smasher Pass on like some Mormon temples. That was really fun. I have merch available. I'm currently working with some people to design. Yeah, lots of good stuff in the info box, including my Goodreads account, which shows all the books that I'm reading or want to read. A lot of people ask me, um, like for book recommendations, it's on there. Donate to some abortion funds if you can. I have one running the Dunking Darling um, t-shirt fundraiser. I decided to give the Jedi Knights some presents in December. So I'm going to be covering some people that you have been foaming at the mouth for me to cover in December. So don't you worry. I got you covered once again. Love you guys drink water. Um, and don't let anybody make you feel bad about putting your Christmas tree up.
Okay? The earth is dying and we're losing our rights. It really doesn't matter. Put your fucking Christmas tree up. If it makes you happy, it can't be that bad. Cheryl Crow said that. Anyway, bye-bye, guys. I will see you later. Adios. Beep. Stand up. Turn around. Sit down.